Well, hey there, guys. Got some more notes for you to fill in. They should look like this when they're all done. Today, as you can see on the screen, uh, up there, 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 up over there, we're going to talk about the electron clouds and electron orbitals. So you need the notes that say orbitals here at the top. That's to say orbitals here at the top. That's what we're going over right here, right now. How fun. Oh, now I'm over here. So wild. In the previous set of notes, we discussed the electron cloud and how the electrons are sort of moving around really fast. They're all over the place, and they tend to spend more time closer to the nucleus. But if you look closely at this cloud, you'll notice that there's a bunch up here and there's a bunch over here. So we're going to talk about what is actually going on with what looks like different levels or different shells within the electron cloud. So for starters, it's worth mentioning that electrons closer to the nucleus are going to be attracted with more force. Make sure you're filling in the notes, right? The electrons closer to the nucleus are attracted with more of the force. And the opposite is also true. Electrons that are farther from the nucleus will be attracted with less force. Okay? Okay. Seems to make sense to me. So far. So again, we're looking at it. These ones here, these are going to be harder to pull away. These electrons out here are going to be easier to pull away from the nucleus. That's going to matter more in our next uh, little bit of the unit where we talk about bonding and chemical reactions. But as you can see right here, we do have two very distinct different levels or shells. These different energy levels, like I just said, energy levels where the electrons can be found are either called shells or orbitals. I was taught orbitals, but a lot of the literature now says shells. You'll hear them both probably in this class used interchangeably. Here we have the different orbitals, the different shells. You'll notice in your notes that they are already labeled for you with these names. No, you don't need to remember the names, but what you do need to remember is how many electrons can fit in shell. Remember the nucleus, not all that large. Now, is it? Most of the atom is empty space. So close up to the nucleus in the smallest orbital, we only have room for two electrons. The next orbital has room for eight. The next orbital is a little bigger, but still only has room for eight. The next orbital after that has room for eight. 18. Make sure that you write these numbers down on your notes right here. On your notes, like, write those numbers, write those numbers. On the periodic table, you actually will see that you don't even need to memorize 2, 8, 8, 18, and then whatever comes next. All you have to do is remember that the periodic table actually tells you. If you look at the very first row, rows, by the way, are going horizontally. So this is the first row right here. We look at the first row, and as you can see on the screen, there are two elements in the first row. Look at how many electrons fit in the first shell. It's just two. Two elements in the first row, two electrons fit in the first shell. The next row, if we count them out here, watch this, count them out here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements in the second row. Eight elements in the second row. And I'll bet you guessed it. Oh, my dad, look at eight electrons in the second shell. Two elements in the first row, that was two electrons in the first shell. The second row has eight elements, and that is to remind you that there are eight electrons in the next shell. If we move out from there, if we move out from there, holy crap, look at the next one. Third row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's right, the third shell holds eight. I'll bet you can tell me how many elements are in the one, two, three, fourth row of the periodic table. It's 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 elements in the fourth row because there are 18 electrons in the fourth shell. The fifth shell would also take 18. And then the sixth shell stuff gets real weird because that little doodle right there says, burp, burp, got to count those. So in the sixth shell, if we ever had an element that big that we would be looking at in class, which we won't, would have one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, go back, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 electrons could fit in the sixth shell. Oh, that's so many electrons. That's so many electrons. But the periodic table tells you how many fit in each shell. On top of that, which row the element is in tells you how many shells that that element gets. Hydrogen and helium are both in the first row. They only need one electron shell. The second row, we've got my friend and yours, lithium, one of my favorite elements. That needs two rows. The first row can fit one, two electrons, and the second row can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Lithium, having the atomic number of three, only has three electrons, but we need two shells for those two electrons. To help us understand the whole shells and where they go, we have a model called the Bohr model, capital B, because it's named after Dr. Bohr. And this Bohr model helps us just show the electron configuration of different atoms, which matters for how they'll react. So this will be important in the coming week. Remember, in the first shell, we can only fit two electrons. So once we fill that first shell, it's full. Then we move to the next shell. The next shell can hold two, four, six, eight electrons. And the shell after that can also hold Eight electrons. After that, we move out another shell, and now we can hold 18. It. In two, eight, 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 eight. This matters because you're about to be drawing Bohr models as the next assignment after this one. When you draw the Bohr models, remember, you're going to show the nucleus. I want to see protons and neutrons. Look down here in the lower corner of your screen. You'll see we're showing the six protons. We're showing six neutrons. Yes, this is carbon, has an atomic mass of 12. And then around it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. This right here in this bottom corner, that is a Bohr model for carbon with an atomic mass of 12 and the atomic number six. Keep in mind, we know from the pen game, that carbon has six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. Like it says right here, you're gonna start at the inside with those electrons and work your way out. So the first two of these six electrons go in the first orbital. Then we need to move to the second orbital where we have one, two, three, four electrons. Four plus two, that is all six electrons. Notice you have a complete Bohr model, the way that carbon looks, we have to have two shells. I will show you again now. Carbon is right here in the second. Oh. Fill the first shell first, move your way out. So as you can see on the worksheet, you'll be making some Bohr models. This right here is the Bohr model hydrogen. Hydrogen has one proton. It has an atomic mass of one because it does not have any neutrons. So we have one proton from our one atomic number. We have no neutrons because one minus one is zero. There's no charge written here. So we take one minus zero. That tells us that we have electron. There it is around the nucleus in the... That one's not too bad. Hartman gets a little trickier. Rather than showing me uh, on your screen or on a piece of paper a Bohr model, you're actually going to use Beans, how fun. You'll need a marker, you'll need some beans. They'll probably be a big pile like this, but I won't need all that many to show you what I wanna show you. You will also, of course, need your periodic table. Now I'm going to show you a Bohr model for my favorite element, lithium. Here's lithium. You see we have lithium, that's blurry. So I'm just going to, on this table, I'm going to copy for you the symbol for lithium. You will be showing me the Bohr models for hydrogen, carbon, neon, beryllium, aluminum, and silicone. When you show me the Bohr model, I will come around and stamp your paper. Show me one at a time. It's going to be fun day. I will show you lithium. Lithium is one of my favorite elements. Its atomic number is Li. It has three protons and it has an atomic mass of seven. In this lab, we'll be using the uh, black beans here as protons. We'll be using the white beans here as neutrons. 
we'll be using the little lentils as electrons. Some of them are orange and electric, some of them are green, doesn't matter, they're still gonna be electrons. So lithium, having the atomic number three, has one, two, three protons in the nucleus, I don't need any more. To get up to seven, I need one, two, three, four neutrons. Notice now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things in the nucleus. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things in the nucleus. So that's all the more things I need in the nucleus. You can mix them up, you can make them happy, however you want to play it. Worth mentioning that the neutrons are what hold the protons together because they're all positive and those like charges repel each other. Then we will need to start putting in some electrons. Lithium having the atomic number three when it has no charge written here has also three electrons. Lithium is in the second row of the periodic table. So I'm going to need to have two orbitals around the nucleus. There's one orbital. Here's my second orbital. Start by filling the first orbital. We've got one, two electrons. You can put them in there however you like. Normally, uh, people put them opposite or we put them in pairs. Here they're opposite. The third one cannot fit in there. That orbital is now full, so I go to the second shell. Notice the second shell has room for eight, but I'm all out of electrons because I don't need any more electrons or neutrons to do lithium. Lithium has an atomic number of three, so I have one, two, three protons. I have four, five, six, seven things in the nucleus all together for my atomic mass of seven, and I have one, two, three electrons. This is a perfect Bohr model for lithium. If you showed me this and you had lithium on the paper, you'd be getting a stamp. But you don't, so you won't show me carbon instead. Or better yet, show me hydrogen. You just saw it in the notes. Thanks for watching.